Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. John, thanks for being with us. Uh, we got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. Because uh, we got some UFC bets coming up as well yeah. for Saturday Night's Fights. Uh, Uncle Dana is, is blessing us with, with more sports. Jesus, do we need that guy um, yep. right now. Uh, first and foremost is our title sponsor, KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you twenty percent off and free shipping on a case of that. It is the best in the biz. I uh, got off a long flight last night. That was <clears> the first <throat> thing I poured myself was uh, a little mango, mm -hmm. CBD, and vodka, and it's it's uh, really sets the tone these days. To yeah. be honest, with you. I just talked to all their people yesterday actually, and they're very happy with the Drinking Bros community. Oh, I, I, look, we Which we love their product. All of our sponsors usually are. Yeah, they are. But it's like, man, it's one of those things where this was necessary. Mm -hmm. um, I was tired of getting weird, shitty CBD. You and I had probably tested out 10 or 12 products. I don't know. I've tried them all, I think. All of them. And they were all shitty. And you don't know where they're coming from. You can't trust them. Mm -hmm. When Kilcliffe said, hey, man, we want to come on. Um, it's a brand you can trust. They've been around for, for fucking ever. They were mm -hmm. in range 15. And you know you're not going to piss hot on drug tests. There's no THC in this. It is pure CBD, 25 milligrams in every single can. There's no carbs, no sugars, and it tastes amazing. Mm -hmm. There is not a better mixer on God's green earth right now than no. KillCliffCBD.com. Not only is it delicious, but it's also promoting homeostasis, which means that your central nervous system is operating as it should. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I cannot recommend this enough. You got uh, aches or pains, man. Take a fucking can of CBD, 25 milligrams in every single can. Go to KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you 20% off and free shipping. A grape is my jam, dude. I'm, I'm out of grape. Um, cereal grapist, do you mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm out of the cereal grapist. <clears throat> it's my favorite. Uh, next up is MyBookie.com. This is it, man. We've been, <laughs> we've been betting on this shit every weekend. We've been betting on every single fight. It's like junkies. I can't believe we've won as much as we have. You were, I'll give you this. The first card, you were 8 no. I was 7 and 1. Yeah. And when the fight I lost was a chick fight. Yeah. Um, but uh, they're back, dude. Look, we're betting on all the fights Saturday again. Sign up for Drinking Bros Sports on Facebook. It's a private group, and you can see all of our betting slips because mm. we post them there the day of. Not just UFC, but uh, NFL, college, yeah, everything. Every, everything else, man. Because I've, I already put money on the fucking bills um, <laughs> to, to go. Over eight and a half wins this year, too. Yeah, that's like, insulting that they would a give them eight joke. and a half. Their their defense is worth that amount of wins by itself. It's a joke. So you get you get half your money back when you deposit right now. That's the deal. You throw in a hundred, you get one fifty back, and uh, it's amazing, man. So um, go to go to mybookie.com promo code Drinking Bros. Uh, that'll get it going, dude. That'll get you all juiced up, brother. <clears throat> um, UFC two five zero. Two five zero. And by the way, if you're, um, you know, not maybe betting on uh, UFC, um, you can always go to their casino, dude. Uh, Drinking Bros Casino will also double your deposit if you're in there, uh, fucking around. Um, and and that Drinking Bros will will match your deposit halfway up to a thousand dollars. So if you're trying to throw ten thousand, dollars a lot of people are of like, mm -hmm. hey man, I'm gonna throw ten grand get get another. Five grand out of it, they won't go that high. But they'll go up to a thousand dollars on that. Go to yeah. mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros. Uh we'll, we'll get you another halfer on that shit. Um and I'm in it. Uh you can also do other fucking simulations like FIFA and mm -hmm. um Madden and all that other shit. I talked <clears throat> I was at a dinner with Xander, our buddy Xander. You know, he's been betting on those fucking Maddens. He's a junkie. A lot of people though. Like Xander on Xander will text or DM me and be like, hey, what do you think about this game? I'm like, dude, I didn't know that game existed. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> He'll find a Central Texas team that's like D3. Yeah, he loves like, a gamble. It's minus 31 and a half. He loves a gamble. I was like, I don't know who the fuck that is, bro. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. go to mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros, uh, and bet with us or against us. Shit. Oh, shit. Alonzo Menafield is in this one. A lot of people, yeah. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people bet against us just to do it, and then they get fucked. So, eh, good luck. Either way, I don't give a shit. Um, but let us know how you did and sign up for Drinking Bros Sports on Facebook, and then you can really talk shit to us live as it's going on. Uh, last but not least, Anthony, we've got getroman.com. Forward slash drinking bros. Get your dick hard. Get your dick hard. If it's not hard watching the UFC fight, throw a throw a little pill inside your mouth. 
Watch that thing pop out of the skin, dude. Uh, let it release. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> free willy it, you know? Just as it goes up, just rub your fingers across across the bottom of it, of the shaft. And watch your penis fly yeah, over your head. I'm sure dude. that'll work. But Well, it does not it doesn't. Um, but I know this. Uh, a lot of people are still quarantined and they're looking to fuck. Maybe make a little baby. Um, you can go to GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros today. You don't have to visit a doctor anymore. There's a reason why Roman has overtaken Viagra. It's because you can just order boner pills online. So if you got ED, uh, erectile dysfunction, or you just want to fucking party recreationally mm-hmm. like us, dude, and, and keep sweet boning. Uh, sweet, sweet boning all night long. Uh, go to GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros today and uh, take a little five-question thing with the doctor and boom. Free shipping. It's in your mailbox 48 hours later. And if you have any good ideas for what uh, Roman's uh, motto should be, Mm -hmm. leave them in the YouTube comments because I always find those funny. Yeah, so do I. Like, make your wife hate you. Make your wife hate you. Roman. Roman. Um, Because we actually had that story. Like, this dude's wife was like, uh, or this dude was like, my wife was like, stop following me around with your dick all the time. Yeah, she's pissed. I have things to do, man. I can't just get fucked all day. She was pissed. Luckily, she was sleeping on a ghost bed from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. That 30% deal, it, look, there's two days left. Um, the 30% off bundle package for Memorial Day is still available. Everything else is 25% off in the store. And if you order a mattress, you get two free pillows right now. Don't be scared. Go and fucking get it now because they got a 36-month pay-as-you-go program. No interest on that. So it knocks it down to 20 bucks a month. Everybody's looking to get a new mattress. I'm getting one here. Um, coming up, dude. They got that cooling mattress. <laughs> it's summertime. It's time for yeah. me. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and uh, use that Trump money, dude. It's only 20 bucks a month with the fucking all those deals with the the, the low the no APR for 36 mm. months are still applicable. Might as well take advantage of it before that shit goes away. Uh, they've been cool about it through the quarantine, but uh, whenever it stops, it stops. Uh, go get it now at GoSped.com forward slash Drinking Bros today. Let's go over the UFC card uh, for this weekend here. I kind of like there's a lot. There's two fights that I'm very, very excited about. One is the headliner, which is Amanda Nunez, because yeah. she is the best female fighter of all time. I agree. Like without question. She's yes. beaten everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody that's ever been a champion, I think she's beaten. Like, yeah. She's beaten Holm and and. Uh, cyborg and uh, what's her nuts? Uh, uh, she's, uh, look, she's beating everybody on the planet. And and before anybody starts jumping down our fucking throat about Ronda Rousey, look, Ronda Rousey was amazing. She was definitely yeah. ahead of her time. The problem yeah. was women caught up with her. She was a victim of her own success because she didn't grow as a fighter because she was so successful in the beginning. That's my opinion. Correct. But it made every other girl yeah. who was watching at home, watching Ronda Rousey destroy everybody, say, yeah. dude, I can do this. She definitely paved the way. There's no question about yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and she deserves <clears throat> and, all of the credit she gets. And so does Holly Holm for doing the same thing plus beating her later. Yes. Like there's a lot. Those those two women more than anybody else, I think, fundamentally changed the way we viewed women Women's fighting. MMA, yeah. yeah. Um, because now these fights are, to me, Dan, these fights are just as exciting as the men. Some of them. The good ones are just... Well, but that's the case with the men's. There's a lot of boring men's fights, too. It is, man. And you take Amanda Nunez, like, I'm amped for this. I'm fucking mm-hmm. amped when she steps in. I don't care who she's you. fighting. I like her attitude. She's one of those people, like, not to compare her directly, but like Jordan and Kobe, people that have not only the talent, but also the drive and focus. Mm-hmm. Like, they, she has both of those parts yeah. to make her a champion. She's great at what she does. And I... Everybody likes watching great people do the things that they're the best at. Right. Like, it's... it's. So, she's fighting Felicia Spencer. Uh, the over-under for rounds is one and a half. Yeah. That's the that's the bet I'm taking. I think it's done in the first round. Uh, <laughs> the under is plus 160, so that is, that is not favored right now. I know it's not favored. Um, man... It's so hard to bet against her, though, isn't it? I, I Well, that wouldn't necessarily be a bet against her. I mean, she's minus 600 on the line, straight up. So she's obviously going to win this fight unless something crazy happens. It's right. a matter of when she's going to win the fight. So according Nune- to this, Nunez you're will take her seven time and sometimes. a half minutes. Seven and a half minutes. Can Felicia Spencer last seven and a half minutes is the question. No. <laughs> so you got to go under, right? I'm going under, yeah. Okay. For sure. Um, I mean, her last fight, Nunez's last fight went with the distance. Um, 
but most of her fights don't. No, they do not. Like uh, when she fought uh, Holly Holm, knocked her out in 410. When she fought Cyborg, knocked her out in 51 seconds. Uh-huh. When she fought uh, Raquel, uh, Raquel Pennington, knocked her out in two and a half minutes, give or take. Um, so Cyborg was in the first round too? Yeah, when she knocked out Ronda Rousey, it was 48 seconds in. Yeah. When she uh, submitted Misha Tate, who was another great fighter, 316 in the first round. So she's – I'm basing this on the fact that most of her big wins against mm-hmm. great opponents have been in the first round within the first three minutes or so, within right. the first minute in two of the cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is a very good fighter, and she's also aggressive. That plays well for her to win before a minute and a half or a round and a half goes by. So it's plus 160 on that. I um, think it's a good bet because it's I, – I, I agree because, you, look, if you're trying to bet on the odds of this, yeah. either you're taking Felicia Spencer or, or you're not because at minus 600 – you're gonna to have to bet thousands of dollars to make any money off that guy. That's thing. not a. It's not a smart bet to bet the straight up, but to bet the under, I think, is a smart bet. I'm gonna take the under as well. In it's this. it's that close. It's yeah. like minus one sixty or plus one sixty. You can make a little bit of money. Oh, you can, that's, that's yeah. almost double your odds. I'm yeah. like I'm I'm in for that. Um, I, I think I'm gonna take the under in this as well. Obviously, I'm taking Amanda Nunez. I might parlay it too. Um, just, just if you relax. parlay the tw- the two, you could at least make a little bit more money. Yeah. 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 Um and I'm into that. Like uh that'll get my uh that'll get my that'll get my dick hard here. Um the other one and cuz here's what I like about my bookie. I bet on them so much. They have selected for you. Like, hey, Ross. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what's up, you fucking junkie? This one's selected for you. Uh it's Eddie. Uh Eddie Wineland and versus Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley is, is one of my faves as well. He's at minus 500, though. Mm. Um, this is another one that the over-under is a round and a half. On. I don't know how O'Malley can see around his hair, though. It's like best salad in the business, dude. Um, I mean, he's, It's almost like when I permed mine out. He's got a lot of hair. Got a lot of hair. It seems like it would be distracting to me. One to would be think. Like, I don't understand how... Palomalo did it, or these NFL guys now that have the oh, long no. the long braids. Dude, it's ridiculous. Like, that's a lot of fucking weight to be carrying. Braids around. are heavy as fuck, yeah. dude. Um, <clears throat> uh, obviously, I've got Sean O'Malley in this one. Uh, I'm assuming you do as well. Well, yeah, he's uh, minus 500. The the problem with this one is that is again under uh, one and a half rounds, and I think it's an over. I think uh, Patolo is a lot tougher, and he's going to be. I don't think he's going to lean into punches and shit. I think he's going to try to fucking take him into the, the middle rounds. And intentionally, I think he's going to try to do that. So I don't expect the first round knockout. Yet. So it's minus 150, and the over-under is a round and a half. So clearly my bookie and Vegas think this, that that's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm with you on that. I think I'm going to take the over in this. I'm, I'm obviously going to take Sean O'Malley, but I, that's another one that I might parlay mm. as well. Um, so I can win a little bit more money because let's face it, minus five hundred isn't going to get you no uh, dick on that. <clears throat> now you're going to win five bucks. Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe you know, uh, maybe. Uh, who's next up on that card, Anthony? Um, let's see. It's Neil Magny, if that's how you say his name. I don't know. And Anthony Martin, which is another actually really good fight at welterweight. Uh, I expect these guys to beat the bejesus out of each other. To be honest, no, this no, it's not. Well, look, we got spoiled last time with with uh, Ferguson taking that damage from Gagey. I don't think we're going to see anything like that again. Hopefully not, because I feel like Ferguson should retire after that. To be honest, but uh, <sighs> these guys are probably going to beat each other up pretty good. So this will be a super entertaining fight, I think. Yeah. Um. Right now. Neil is is the favorite at minus one fifty. I mean that's pretty close. Minus one fifty. It is uh, Anthony Rocco Martin's. <laughs> it, it's uh, plus one twenty on that. I think I'm gonna t- I'm gonna take Martin in this one actually. Um, at plus one twenty. Um, the over under in this one is two and a half rounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, with guys like this that are this small, I I don't I wouldn't recommend betting the unders in these. Um, I, no, I, really I mean, look, uh, at least from Magny's perspective, he most of his fights uh, finish somewhere between the second and fifth or and fourth round mm-hmm. and, and right around in there. So I, I don't I wouldn't I think it's a bad bet. If you see somebody like Nunez who finishes fights consistently in the first round and that that one and a half minus 
or under is is a good bet. Right. If you see somebody who is very frequently in the second, third, and fourth round, maybe in the fifth round, yeah, don't take that under. It's just bad. That's bad math. Yeah, and I, look, I think this over under at two and a half is is priced right. Like I think that's exactly where it should be. Yeah. Um, and I'm amped to watch it. Um, we we one of our our new guys here, Papa Giorgio. Um, what do you who, who do you got in this fight? Um, this, uh, uh, Magni versus Martin. Who cares, dude? This, this is what you do. Uh, we're going to, I'm trying, I'm trying to lure him into it here just so he's wrong on air. You won't do it, huh? <laughs> That's what happened. So you, you are, you, you do train with a lot of these guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one, one would think that, you know. I, I, yeah, one would think. But, uh, but you don't like to gamble on this shit, do you? No, I just take all your bets and, and bet on those. Yeah. I take your line every, every uh, we, Look, we've been good. We, we, we've been really goddamn good on these things. Uh, it's funny, though. You speak to a lot of UFC fighters, even when we talk to John Anik, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> John's always hesitant uh, sometimes to pick a winner in these things where he's like, Well, ah. he, he's because he calls the fight. He doesn't want to call a winner. But offline, even... Like I mean, offline, not, though, he's like, yeah. he, he always lives and dies by, look, anything can happen on any given day. Yeah. And I agree with that. We've seen some shocking um, wins in, mm-hmm. in the UFC. Uh, and so I understand it. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just I'm leaning towards Martin on this one. That's where, that's where I'm going to go. Uh, who do we got up next here? D'Anthony D'Anthony. Uh, Sterling versus uh, Sandhagen. Yeah. Whew. It's a ban- These Bantamweight bouts are tough for me, man. Um, yeah. It's just, it's so, it's so small. You're so small, you know, uh, and these goddamn things. Um, it's, these are tough to pick. In, these are really tough to pick on, on the female side. I mean, they're 135 pounds. I know. <clears throat> I mean, dude, I was, I was 135 in sixth grade, Dan. Yeah. Sixth grade. I was, I was 135 pounds. That's why these are always really, really difficult for me to choose. And I, I think I'm like me personally, um, I'm going to sit this one out. I mean, I'm looking at the odds right here. It's Sterling minus 125. Uh, even Sanhagen's at, at minus 105 here. So Yeah, there's no good odds on this. Clearly, yeah. it's a pick em fight. It's and also a non-title fight that's an over two and a half, which means they expect it to go to di- go the distance. Yeah. And you're you're basically putting your money up in the hands of the judges at that point. And we've, we've all seen how inconsistent... No offense to the UFC or anything, but we've seen how inconsistent that judging can be. Because one, mm-hmm. somebody from, uh, which fight was it last time? Somebody graded it 30-27, and there's no fucking way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that yeah. it was even close to that. It was like 27-29 at the, at the best case scenario for that guy. But, uh, you know, I don't like putting my money in other people's hands. Like, bet, grind it out. Yeah. Bet, bet the sure stuff. Sometimes you're going to lose, but more often than not, you're going to win. That's why we're so accurate most of the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. And look, it's the same way I'm not betting it this next fight. This uh, Raphael uh, Asuncao? Uh, I cannot not, say definitely that. Definitely not that. No, I, that's why I like having John Anik on the shows because he is the best at pronouncing. Like, I, I worked for uh, immigration at Homeland Security doing <laughs> intel stuff for a while. And I would straight up, when I was investigating people, I would just straight up tell them, look, man, I can't pronounce your name. I'm no. sorry. I don't mean to be offensive nope. or anything, but I just can't say it. So Same. Can, is there something else I can call you? <laughs> Same. Uh, uh, and th- this is another fight that's uh, it's, it's a pick em. Um, It's uh, Cody Garburn is, is it's uh, minus 150. And Raphael's it's uh, plus 120. It's another one where the over-under is two and a half rounds, and they're each mm. at minus 115. So it's like, hey, man, flip a coin on both of these guys. Yeah. Um, which is um, great to see as a fan, um, but bad to see as a gambler. So yeah, I don't know why. Like, if if I'm if my headliner, honestly, usually I like maybe Dane is right. We'll see at the end of this thing. But usually, when I see a female headlock, like a lighter weight headliner, mm-hmm. you see a couple of bruisers behind her, and and not two fucking bantam weights, and then a welterweight and another bantam weight on the main card. Yeah, usually they want to put somebody with knockout power in there, which is interesting because. One of the guys that we saw at uh, the the Tuesday night Dana White con- contender, contender series, series yeah. uh, Alonzo Menafield is actually fighting in the early prelims, mm-hmm. like during the day. Yeah, and this guy's a fucking monster, man. I've seen him fight twice in person now. He fucks people up. He's nine and zero in the UFC. I don't know why he's not getting more opportunities here. Maybe maybe there's something else going on there, but he fucks people up. Maybe I and I, and I will say this: <clears throat> like the the beauty of all these undercards um, 
is they're free. Mm. Uh, so you, you can go on and watch them. And it's all day long. And it's like, dude, at this point, I will literally watch whatever sporting event is on live all day long. I'm tired of seeing all the replays of games and all yeah. the other shits. Um, we've got some breaking news here. Uh, the NBA, the proposed date for a Game 7 of the NBA Finals is October 12th. So For the last game of the finals. Correct. Yeah. If, if it went all seven games, so clearly mm-hmm. they're not going to even entertain a March Madness no. scenario, which I didn't really think was possible. I wanted to see it, but I, I, I agree with you, Dan. If that happened, the fans would never not want that to happen again. I, I think they're afraid to set the precedent, I, I to be honest. Too. Um, I, I yeah, too. I actually just saw you and I in the crowd. It's on YouTube on this Minifield fight. Oh really? Um, I think so. Yeah, hey. I think I see us back there. We're definitely at this fight. So I, um, this guy, this is one I'm going to bet on because I like this dude. Okay. Like I met his family and shit while we were there. Uh, he, That's right. He. So let me tell you the story about fucking Alonzo Menafield. He's minus two twenty five, and you can bet on this fight on my bookie. He's yeah. going up against Devin <clears throat> Clark. Yeah. Uh, so he fought Brock Combs, which is a guy a lot of people know. Mm-hmm. He's he's a very cowboy Cerrone kind of guy where he doesn't he never really won. A championship, but he's been around for a long time. He's fought a lot of fights. He's a tough dude. Everybody knows it. So uh, Metafield punched this guy so hard in the face with his left. And th- these guys were in gloves, by the way. The, yeah. the fucking doctor had to pull a tooth out of his hand. Yeah. He had to pull a tooth out of in between his knuckles on his left hand because he punched him so hard in the fucking face. Yeah. These are the people that I want to see fight. Same. You know what I mean? Same. Like, but- I will be watching this during the day and betting on it, even though it's a fucking early prelim fight because yeah. this is super exciting. I'm me. in. I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll bet on him with you. At minus 225, I'm going to have to bump that up to probably 300 bucks to see a little key shot. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna bet the under of uh, of uh, one and a half because it's, it's minus 105. That's a pretty it is, good. It is, yeah. Yeah. Um, one and a half, though. Whew. Man, those always scare the shit out Metafield of me. Metafield opponents don't last very long. They don't. Like that fight we saw took eight seconds. Yeah, he punched the first. As soon as they came together, he punched him once, and the guy was down. And this is a good fighter. Punched him once, the guy was down. And then the the only reason it took eight seconds is the same reason that it took uh, Street Jesus a little bit longer to wipe out uh, what's his nuts after he kneed him in the face. Yeah, because he had to finish him off. Like they wouldn't just call the fight then. But if he had called the fight when it was actually over, it would have been two seconds. Oh, easily. Uh, I lo- I love watching Alonzo Menafield fight. Uh, that'll be a blast on Saturday. Yeah. Um, again, thank you, Dana White. Jeez, mm-hmm. dude, this is I, that guy's gonna be exhausted <laughs> after this. Yeah. How much? This is the fourth. This is the fourth fight card. He's already put put on, and since May fourteenth. Yeah. <clears throat> um, By the way, the uh, there's already odds up for Gagey versus McGregor, McGregor versus Masvidal, and Gagey versus Khabib. So I think the most likely here. Uh, is Gagey versus Khabib. What are the odds for that? So Gagey is plus 170, and Khabib is minus 220 for that one. <sighs> but if that happens, then McGregor Masvidal would definitely happen because there's nobody else for him to fight unless he fights Diaz again, yeah, which is possible. Yeah. But that one is plus 130, McGregor, minus 160, Masvidal. Minus 160 for Jorge Masvidal yeah. against Conor McGregor. Vegas is making a statement here. I don't know if they're trying to bait him into this fight or what. I don't. I don't know if there's politics behind this because we know one of the former bookmakers yeah, yeah, yeah. that set odds in in Vegas. Yep. Um, and you know they'll tell you like, oh yeah, no, we just do it the way we do it. But I don't believe that at I all. I don't either. I think they set up these matchups and set these lines to make people like, no, that's fucking stupid. I'm taking that bet. Yeah. And then it swings it on one side, and everybody else who believes the other way is like, oh, we got to fucking bet on this because now these odds are good. It's a marketing game. I get it. Yeah. But I don't. I don't think Masvidal is a fucking one point six favorite over McGregor. I think that's a pretty evenly matched fight, actually. It'd be a, a, it's, a, a 170. It's got to be, right? No, it's going to be higher than McGregor. Yeah. That's, no, I think that McGregor's – his highest weight was 170 against Diaz. So, it would have to be uh, catch weight. Yeah. They're going to have to – Are they s- fighting in the in the lightweight division I'm not at sure. that point? Cause I'm Mas- not sure. I, look, I don't think it's going to happen. And uh, from Dana White's press conference the other day, he said, look, I have not talked to Conor McGregor. I haven't mm. thought about a Conor McGregor fight yet. Um, it is not in my mind. Uh, the, what the outsiders are saying, that the only thing that makes sense is maybe have him being the, the first to fight on Fight Island mm. uh, when that actually gets up and running here. And it's going to be soon. What do they say? By October, I think. I don't know. Um, September, October, and Fight Island. That would be a blast. Me, personally, um, 
I would be I'd be stoked about a McGregor Diaz trilogy. I I mean, look, I would love to see McGregor fight Masvidal because it, yes. McGregor's got to bring the fucking heat in that fight. First of all, he's jumping up a weight class, which he's not used to fighting at. He's yeah. fought a couple times there, but one seventy against a guy like Masvidal, like you're fighting a top ten guy from that division mm-hmm. at that point. It's not like you're gaining weight and fighting some fucking scrub. Masvidal will fuck you up. So that that I, I either want to see the the trilogy of Nate Diaz or I want to see the Street Jesus fight with, for McGregor. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to see a Khabib fight. I want to see Gagey fight Khabib. I think Gagey's going to fight Khabib, and I think Khabib's going to fuck him up, to Oof, be honest. Really? Yeah. God damn. I, I, hate I mean, Khabib. I think I think Gagey can win that fight, but I think Khabib I too, is but... so goddamn disciplined. He does not move away from his game plan at all. He's like Anderson Silva. Yeah. Like he had, he had yeah. all he had all the talent, but he also look. Uh, Giorgio off off uh, camera is saying that talking about Khabib's takedown ability. Gaethje does have one of the best takedown defenses in all of MMA, mm-hmm. but Khabib's the best at it. So that's almost like watching the best offense versus the best defense and seeing how it plays out. So it's a, it'll uh, it'll absolutely be an interesting fight, but I don't think there's any way Gaethje can win that fight. No. I don't think anybody can no. beat Khabib in that weight class, except for maybe somebody like Masvidal, who doesn't give a fuck about form and structure and all that other bullshit. He's just like, you know what? Fuck this guy. I'm going to whoop this guy's ass. Because I don't think McGregor felt like he could win that fight. We were at that fight. Yeah. I felt like McGregor went in. He he gave a half-hearted, like, fucking dumb gorilla walk thing he does. And it was it seemed like he was tired the whole time. Well, he was swinging for the fences. I just don't think that he had the proper training for what it takes for somebody like Khabib. You've yeah. got to be your very best right now. You have to be uh, to beat like him. you have to be on your game plan and discipline yeah. the whole time, which I mean frankly Gaethje did it in his last fight. He, he was he was for and except for that 10 second period where he got uppercut. Yeah. Uh he was on his game plan and listening to his corner the whole time, so maybe he can pull it out, but honestly I don't see it. The audience gets on me every time I say I want <clears throat> Khabib to lose because he's so fucking boring to watch. I I'll continue to say that forever. My dream would be to see Gagey just knock him the fuck out and call it a day. Um, yeah, and then go great. on, like, look, then whoever McGregor fights, then go on and fight McGregor after that and get the huge payday and see yeah. what happens out of that. Well, look Gagey at, versus McGregor, if yeah. McGregor had one more tune-up fight, would be also a blast yeah. to watch because nobody's going to try to submit in that goddamn thing. No. Every, everybody always, and just from my perspective, everybody always, or to, to my perspective, not from it, everybody always says stuff like that. Like, I don't think this guy can win. Until they fucking win, and look, I, I feel like Gagey is very physically talented, and his technique is very good. Mm-hmm. And I also feel like his brain works at a level where if he can hear his coaches telling him to do stuff, he's probably going to do it. Like he's got a very kinesthetic style, learning and and action. Seer, <laughs> he's not fucking in his own head too much. It's like face fist yeah. got it yeah. i'm gonna punch this motherfucker in the face right you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. like a and b there's no c in the middle of that shit he's just fucking does stuff he's the kind of guy that can definitely beat khabib i feel like connor thought himself out of winning that fight like he tried to go outside of himself to win when he should have just fucking stayed back on his back foot and lobbed fucking left uh jabs at this guy until he fucking caught him with one because his let the look regardless of what you think about connor mcgregor or his last several fights which he's Except for the Cerrone one, didn't win any of them. Mm-hmm. Regardless of what you think about him, his left hand is one of the most lethal weapons in MMA history. Yeah. So you got to respect that shit. I feel like he leaned away from it and got himself fucked up for the for the for the uh, trouble. Gaethje is a little bit more. He just doesn't seem heady. He doesn't seem like he's in his own own head too much. So he's the kind of guy that could probably beat Khabib. Hopefully, I hope. Hopefully he does, but I also like seeing guys continue winning. I just wish he did a little bit more exciting. If Khabib comes out and knocks Gaethje out, that'll be a great fight. I'd love to see that. Khabib doesn't fight enough for me. Like I like guys who fight a lot and often. And you know, that was Cowboy uh, Cowboy Cerrone. Yeah, he fights like eight times a year. Yeah, he f- fights ninety times a year. But he's uh, he's uh, that poor guy's got CTE for sure, right? And he he's not stopping. So so I, somebody's gonna have to say you're all done. But I have a feeling he'll be, you know, in San Antonio Friday night. Probably, yeah. He, he would for, just be like in a bar somewhere. Yeah, fighting, dude, yeah. and just, just fucking yeah. some people up for spare change. But we'll see. I hate to see that, and I hate to say that, but that's, that's all that it is dude what it lives is. for. I watched that 30 for 30 on uh, Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell hmm. on ESPN, and 
that was, the, you know, they went over Chuck Liddell's ending like that. Mm-hmm. And they were like, man, Dana White was like, look, man, I love Chuck Liddell. They should never have fucking let him fight again like that. No. Um, because that was brutal, that last one. Uh, but that's all I knew. He was like, dude, I'm a fucking fighter. That's all I know. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, bet with us or against us on mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros will uh, get uh, half your deposit back up to $1,000. We're going to be watching this fight on Saturday nights and uh, go to Drinking Bros Sports. Um, subscribe. It's a private Facebook group. The reason why it's private, you can see our bets. It's free, obviously, um, but you can talk shit, and uh, and you won't get censored on there. The only rule is don't be a cunt. Hmm? Don't be a cunt. You get to, you know, you can, and even if you are a cunt, you get blocked for a little bit. You'll be a little we bit usually of a let cunt, you, yeah. we, we usually let you come back. Like Ryan Rhodes, I blocked him, and now, he, like, I'll, I'll unblock him coming up here for the new season, you yeah. know? Um, you just, it comes in. If your team wins, just try to be calm about it. Yeah, the, my only disappointment, Dan, is we have the Sarah Williams Award, right? We give yeah. the worst fan, um, you know, of the year away, and they get engraved on the trophy for life. Beautiful trophy, by the way. Um, there's been no sports yet, so nobody's been a fucking dick this year. Yeah, I might just pick somebody. <laughs> they gotta be. It's gotta be an asshole toward their team. Yeah. But right now, everything is filled with all this speculation of what's going to happen and blah 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 blah. Uh, that doesn't happen in UFC where they're like, mm-hmm. yeah, I've got the, this, this one guy. Because there's so many exciting fights uh, on, a, on a card week in and week out that you're like, all right, sweet. Um, so nobody's been an asshole yet. But I look, wait till the Cowboys start up. Mm-hmm. And, then, uh, and then we'll find our winner. This is going to yeah. be my favorite year as a not Cowboys fan because they're going to get this close. And then it's all going <laughs> to evaporate. But it happens every year. Uh, Disgusting Justin says it all the time. Like he, he'll text me and be like, well, Cowboys fans are always in it until they're not, right? They're like they could be fucking seven and nine and make the playoffs. They're like, hey, we're gonna fucking do it. Man. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, there's something uh, there's something quaint and uh, and uh, interesting about the way they think about stuff. Yeah. Like I don't know if it's because when all these people were in their when when they were children, they grew up with the Cowboys winning all the time. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's just like, oh, they're winners just because they haven't won since fucking 95 or four or whatever the fuck doesn't mean they're not going to win again. Time goes by so quickly <clears throat> that you forget it has 93. been 23 years. 93. Um, I then think their last one was in 97. 97 think, yeah, with uh, with the Oklahoma coach who tried to take a gun to the airport. Yeah. But we've all made those mistakes. Everybody's made those mistakes. So um, you're looking at 23 years ago, almost a, a quarter of a century since the Cowboys mm-hmm. have won. Um, a championship, but yeah, look, time goes by, and you're like, all right, sweet. Like there was a guy, it was a guy in the message boards the other day. We were, everybody's getting ready for college football, as are we. Uh, we can't fucking wait. But um, uh, they had the pre rankings for mm-hmm. next year out. Uh, it was Clemson one, uh, Ohio State two, uh, Alabama at three, and then um, they may have flip flop now because Ross is out for the year. Yeah, Justin Ross for um, uh, Clemson is out yep. for the year. Their star wide superstar wide receiver. Um, and then I think Wisconsin was like a shocking four. Um, they were in there. Uh, I, One and two is is usually pretty accurate for mm-hmm. the preseason rankings. Everything else is bullshit. Right. Like it's never. Yeah. Right. So people were bitching about the SEC, obviously, because um, mm-hmm. that's all SEC fans do. And they were like, uh, well, when's the last time Ohio State played an SEC team? What the fuck happened there? I was like, well, it was in 2014, and Ohio State beat Alabama with a third-string quarterback and then won the national championship. Mm-hmm. And they were like, what the fuck, man? What about before that? And I was like, I, all I can do is answer that question, but it's been a really long time <clears throat> since they've played an SEC team. So, yeah. eh, nothing I can do about it. Um, but, yeah, the Clemson fans, Justin Ross is out for the year. Uh, and he like, he might not come back. I don't know what those spinal injuries. Yeah, you don't want to. I mean, he look, he's looking forward to it or looking towards an NFL career probably. He's a really good player, so he's mm-hmm. not going to take any chances with it. I wouldn't expect to see him this year at all. No, he's, but, he's, he's definitely out for the year. But they have, like – five-star recruits that are yeah. receivers that are waiting in the wings. Clemson knows how to recruit. That's they, the, they, they reload, absolutely. Like you, you can't be good. They've been they've been a, a national title contender since, what, 2014? Mm-hmm. So better better part of a decade now. They're not – they know how to recruit. They're not – it's not that big of a deal probably. It's just a chemistry issue. So if you're looking at those early games, um, Clemson doesn't play anybody. So it's really not that much well, of a concern. if you look at Clemson's entire schedule, they don't play. Yeah. Games, so. Well, I mean, just particularly the early games, it'll be nonsense. Yeah. I think the only one that's that's uh, remotely hard is Notre Dame, but yeah. I don't know where that's, that's going to be or how that's going to happen this year. Uh, we'll see. Uh, look, 
Texas A&M and, 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 and Texas Tech came out and they said, look, we're playing fucking football yeah. on the start date, so we're good to go. Yeah, they'll play against each other the whole time. They don't yeah, give a shit. shit. Te- Texas requires – it's like Indiana with basketball. Mm-hmm. If you – if the entire government of Indiana shut down, uh, they would still have to find a way – this is actually from Parks and Recreation, but they would have to find a way to make basketball happen there. Otherwise, people would fucking burn the state down. Yeah. Texas is the same way with football. football you, don't, yeah. you don't understand what – even Pop Warner and then middle and high school football is like in Texas. It yeah. is it is serious shit. Like varsity, <laughs> varsity blues wasn't. I mean, it, look, it's a Hollywoodization if you want to call it that of stuff. But that is not too far from the truth. Friday Night Lights is your best example, and yeah. it was a great book. Um, yeah. and it was that's based on a true story. Like it's not, it's not. They're they're not fucking around down there. No, dude, um, it's real. So I, I'm hopeful it'll all come back. But uh, yeah, those are the rankings, pre rankings right now. We'll see. What the real ones are when that comes out. We're in June. So it's, we're, you know, 60 days is usually when that shit comes out. Usually the first week of August, second week yeah. of August. So <clears throat> we'll see. The NFL's been running commercials that just says, hey, we're in business and we're not going anywhere. Have you seen those over the weekend? Yeah. <laughs> so they're fully saying, hey, guys, don't forget about us because we're starting on time and everybody else can go fuck themselves. Um, Speaking of going to fuck yourself, Lindsey Graham, you were a piece of shit. <laughs> You'll be hearing more about him from me. Later in the week. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. I hate that motherfucker I'm so drinking much. Drinking bros, oh fake news. Well, not even, maybe maybe after that. I don't know. It's the Earn It Act of 2020. Go look that up. Prepare yourself to hear what I'm going to say in a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, join us. We're here every single day throughout the quarantine still. Um, and we're going to keep coming at you. We did two sports shows this week um, just because Fred Smoot was the greatest interview <sighs> of all time. Man, that You've got guy, a ton of messages. We're definitely... I don't care if I have to kidnap the guy. We're going to put him on the Drinker Bros Network on the best. show because he's funny as fuck, dude. Yeah, man. Holy uh, shit. God. He is, the, is one of the very best and one of the funniest interviews we've ever had in our show. Thanks for all the messages. He's also super smart about football. Like, he knows. Oh, yeah. He's, he he's, he's not just some fucking loudmouth. He's a very – he's like Richard. Very he's, he's He's like uh, if you – if Deion Sanders and Richard Sherman had a child, mm-hmm. that's who he is to me. Yeah. Very cerebral guy, but he's also a fucking knucklehead like us. He's a perfect drinker, bro. He's great. He's great. So we're, we'll definitely have him back on the show. Yep. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. Go to mybookie.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros and bet with us or against us on Saturday Night's Fights. Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. It's nice to talk about just sports and nothing else, Dan. Um, I'm a big fan of sport ball. <laughs> and it finally seems like we're getting sports back. Uh, not just UFC either. It seems like everything else is coming back. And with that, we're joined by John Brankis. How are you, John? Oh, my God. I'm just I, <laughs> like sports is coming back. Like what could be better? No, nah, the the image behind you is is the only thing that could be better in this what? world. It's starting to get scary real, by the way. Dude, bro, I'm hanging out at the beach. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so you're not uh, image. You're not in landlocked Atlanta. Then is what you're seeing. I'm not in land. No, okay. I'm actually I'm actually right now in Bora Bora. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Well, there. we all believe it's you. Beautiful. So beautiful. Are you in Atlanta now? <laughs> I am. Oh shit! Well, outside of Atlanta, I mean, of course. Yeah, he's in Alpharetta. You know, Forty-five minutes. I'm in uh, up he's in, in Fulton County. You're in Alpharetta, right? I'm from Alpharetta. I am. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. We love it. Shit! I wonder so. if I could pick your neighborhood. Uh, yeah, <laughs> might be. Might be right. Yeah. Is it? It's ga- awesome. I love it. It's gated, right, John? It's gated. It is gated. I know exactly where you live. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> It is. I know exactly where you live, John. Uh, that's right. Let's let's start off with the NHL. Yep, that's, the, I, I that's like, the fun one. I like the way I I wish with every fiber of my being that the NBA would do this because it would be March Madness. Uh, Can you so imagine good. the NBA version? There's no weak Dude. teams. I mean, there are weak teams, there are weaker teams, but there's all fucking NBA talent. And if you don't show up one night, you're fucking done. Yeah, I fucking done. love that format. We this season's fucked anyways, right? Let's just have fun. Yeah, let's figure I, it out. One hundred percent. Let's figure second out. Second half of the All Star, the second half of the fourth quarter, mm-hmm. or the the fourth quarter of the All Star game is what was it was amazing, right? In the mm-hmm. NBA, why not do Mar- look? We all missed out on March Madness. Why not have March Madness, but with every NBA team? Can you imagine? Like it just makes too much sense. Can you imagine the ratings? Even if it was like a, a best of three for each part of it, 
You know, oh, dude, it's dude. It single would still game eliminate. Here, here, here's here's what you do. Single game elimination. You only like you only have to win four games to win the championship. Mm-hmm. The alerts <laughs> that would be on your phone, like Golden State, you know, leading by five against the Lakers, you would be all over it. Like, e- like, oh my God! Pretty much, it would be amazing. Like but, March Madness, uh, every single NBA fan would be watching every single game. Yeah, you know what every I mean? single game. Like, they, yeah. they, you could not get better. I, I think spread out over the course of all the uh, all the games, you probably wouldn't get as much rating because obviously there's a lot less games, but you would get a lot of viewers, and it would like the oh. the viewers that were watching would be so more intently focused on that game. Yeah, like from every think perspective. About, yeah. It, you know, I, I made this argument. I did do the uh, the Fox show on the weekend, and I just keep making this argument of why not. And I don't, I don't, I can't understand the why not. The only thing that I've heard is, well, some teams don't deserve it. I'm like, in a season like this, like d- the, if there is ever a time to just let everybody in, let them in. Yeah, let them play. Who knows, man? Maybe the Atlanta Hawks win the championship. <laughs> like, well, who knows? Maybe let's, Trey let's Young gets go, on a fucking hot crazy. streak. Yeah. <laughs> Starts scoring totally. 25 a game. He is, uh, he is very good. It would be, look, it would be a blast to watch. And I still, to me personally, right, I still think you could get the greatest team out of it. I, I believe that if you ran that kind of tournament that the Lakers would probably win it. I'm going to go with the Clippers mm. uh, I would, on that. You know what? I'm going to go with... Uh, you know what, what? I would go with somebody completely unexpected, like Houston, because I think the I think that format favors. I, we don't know who's been staying in shape during the quarantine. At we all. don't know who's got a hot hand. Yeah, someone's coming out and they're lighting. They only have to light it up for four games. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like they only, you, you don't have to be very good to just win four games against everybody. So right. I think it's. I would go. It's anybody. I would. I would bet it the the field as opposed to the Lakers or Clippers. Oh, man, maybe, maybe. Uh, mm, but the NHL. Totally. Let's let's start with them. And by the way, uh, mybookie.com is what we're betting on right now. Drinking Bros doubles your deposits on mybookie.com. Um, yeah. What what is the season like? What the NHL season looks like now? Who is the favorite? What is Matt? It lo- yeah. Who do I think is the favorite? Yeah. Oh man, it's like the Bruins have to I mean, be the favorite. The Bruins the, before I, before the season ended, the Bruins were the best team in hockey. Uh, the Bruins, Tampa Bay, the Avalanche, maybe. I think they were a little overrated, but the Golden Knights, Vegas, there yeah. it is. That's don't, mine. Hey, don't don't forget my Cappies. Oh yeah, and the Cap. Yeah, that's I true. I mean, look in a, in a in a fucking in a tournament style playoff like that, somebody like Ovechkin yeah, I mean, can can. Turn the fucking series. Like, yeah, I mean, he could win four games on his own. For example, you know what I mean. Just he's it, that great of a player. Totally. You get hot. I mean, in hot. I mean, really, in hockey, it's like if you get a hot goaltender. I mean, you could oh, have, yeah. you know, <laughs> myself out on the ice and you yeah. still win. Like that. <laughs> like, those yeah. two years that it's like those two years the Penguins won. It wasn't because of yeah. Evgeny Malkin. It wasn't because of Sidney Crosby. No. It was because of Timothy Motherfucking Flurry, the Flower. Totally. He he won those championships for them. And, yeah, and when, totally. they, when they had those hot streaks in the playoffs in Vegas that first year, he was fucking on lockdown that whole time. Yeah, man. Like a, hot, a hot goalie can come. Yeah, you're right. And it's, it's weird we, how that translates we, from sport to sport. Yeah. It is. With, with hockey more than any other sport, mind you, I'm a huge hockey fan. Mm. Um, and we used to do all the production for the Capitals. When the, a, a little-known chapter or, or a not very well-remembered chapter in the NHL was when the Caps made it to the Stanley Cup against the uh, Red Wings. They mm-hmm. ended up getting they, they got they got swept. annihilated. Yeah, they got the, they they got beat badly in in the finals. But in the Eastern Conference Finals, it was Ole Kolzig mm-hmm. against Dominic Hasek, who was Hasek, playing for yeah. the Sabers at the time. And the literally the games were like one to zero, two to one. And it was like two hot goalies, and it was the best hockey ever. It was yeah. unbelievable. <clears throat> but that '98 uh, Red Wings team was. To be reckoned uh, with, just, they were very good. Yeah, yeah. Those. I mean, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read you off the odds real quick here on mybookie.com. Okay, go on. Uh, the favorite. Oh, it's I see. The favorite is the Boston Bruins. Um, at plus five hundred. <clears throat> the uh, Bruins and the Lightning are both plus five hundred. Tampa Bay or plus five hundred. Here's the yeah. problem: Tampa Bay is like the Buffalo Bills, and they're like the Atlanta Braves. When it comes playoff time forget about I it. I agree. They get their shit pushed in. They win one round of yep. playoffs and usually get the second round they get annihilated like yeah. horribly. 
destroyed. And yeah. to say, I don't know what it is, but it, that particular team. But you look, the Red Sox didn't win a World Series for 100 years. And then shit changed, right? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes stuff changes. So Florida was the first to open. Does that have <laughs> anything to do with the players coming back? I think well, there I think, are so many I factors. I think all the players went to Florida. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> they mean, were hanging out in Florida. Even the retired guys. Like, Freddie Mitchell's down there, but he's fishing. I don't think he's running no, no. sprints or anything. No, he's not doing <laughs> any of that. Yeah. Uh, Vegas Knights is the uh, third team at plus 600 yep. here. Um, that's who I'm going to take. Just – just because I love them, by the way, yeah. uh, there is yeah. no funner atmosphere than going no. to Vegas during a playoff and by the hockey way, game. It's a fucking blast. By the way, by the, way the Vegas Golden Knights. Funner Golden-Nights, is a word. It is. It is, Funner yes. and funnest. <laughs> Both of those are funner words. Funner is yeah. a word. Yeah. I don't care what anybody, I don't care what the dictionary says. <laughs> Me neither. The Vegas Golden Knights are a modern <laughs> success story for how you build a new team in the league. Like, mm-hmm. people were so pissed off in that first year. Like, oh, well, this year the fucking expansion draft was way different than it was. And they, they were competitive. Yeah, so it worked, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, why do you want to bring in a team that's just going to suck all year? I agree. Dude. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any that sense. Year, yeah, everything revolves around D.C. sports, as you know. In that year, the Capitals beat the Golden Knights. In just the relax, line. John. <laughs> just relax. It all comes back to D.C. Why don't you put a swamp behind you instead of that fucking nice beach since you're talking about right. D.C. Oh, so much. Yeah. Let me see what I got. Can you find Let a swamp? <laughs> the Capitals are, yeah. are, by the way, they're way, 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 way down this list. So they're uh, their 10th favorite here. That doesn't matter. To win. They're at plus 1,200. Yeah, it matters. It, it does at home. Yeah. I'll tell you why. If you're betting on this, uh, if, if you want to throw a hundred on your favorite team, you're going to win twelve hundred dollars. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm. I'll throw a hundred. I think and it's I, a. I, I think, think during, the Caps are a good bet. Yeah, and I think during a time like this, uh, because everything that's going on, anybody truly can win. Mm. Therefore, it's it's like playing on a, a fucking wet track at the Kentucky Derby. You never like, know. You never know who's right. going to win. So I'd take Dude, one I'll, of these bigger I'll put a hundred teams. I'll easily. By the way, I'm in my basement now. There it is. Ah, it's a great there background. It it's a great uh, background. I am. Uh, I'm, I'll put a hundred on the Caps. I mean the cat. I mean, why? Why would why they have as good a shot as anybody, and they mm. have arguably the best player. They have the best. Here's why Ovechkin's. It, it, people don't really think about this. It Ovechkin is an. I mean, truly one of the most creative goal stor- scorers in the history mm. of the NHL. Mm-hmm. Right? How hard has he been working in the you know in the in the time off here? How much is everybody else? That guy goes on the ice and can just light it up. Like he's. It doesn't matter. You saw how they celebrated. That when they won the Stanley Cup, like he goes out and parties hard, he yeah, can yeah. still go out and score. He he does that matter. during the regular season too, from my understanding. My understanding he does. is that <laughs> does he really? Is that, that true? Mister Ovechkin it, is he's the modern Babe Ruth. He'll go out and or or David, uh, what's his nuts, fat left-handed pitcher from the Yankees, Wells. Wells. He he'll go out and get fucking hammered yeah. the night before and come in and just wreck people on the ice. I don't know what it is. It's probably it's being Russian. Russian. Yeah. That's right. I mean. <laughs> A, like a, he has, he has one of the all-time best ESPN. Uh, this is Sports Center commercials. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they're like when they're like, "Hey, what are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, just some filings. <laughs> <laughs> do you know any personal it, stories in DC from him? Raging? Do I? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We so we did all the production for the Caps and the in the Bullets and the Wizards for seventeen years. So I've been ridiculously blessed. When I tell you all sports goes through DC. When you start linking up, Jordan played in D.C. and was the president. When you like do your six degrees of separation, when you have Michael Jordan, Yammer Yager, Deion Sanders with you know Deion Sanders, Olive, you know Ovechkin, and you start stitching all the <clears throat> stories together, it's all, all sports runs through D.C. Oh, but boy. Ovechkin did. This is hilarious. So for uh, sports science, we did a uh, we were, we had a, a thing called the Newton Awards, like the you know the the best goals of the year you know, based on science and Ovechkin had this amazing goal. I think this is like probably five years ago or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm out there goofing around on, on skates and I'm like, can you teach me how to do that shot? And like totally messing around with them. And every athlete that we've ever worked with is like, sure, let me show you how to do it. And they like show you how to do it. And then you like, you look like an idiot Uh and you try to do it. And I, you know, look really stupid. I said to him, (laughs) can you show me how to do it? He goes, no. (laughs) <laughs> he's like no you can't it, oh, it's just not even worth it he's like you can't you can't do that <laughs> so there's certain things in this life you'll never be able to do and i've no. I've, I've at least accepted it of like all right great yeah i can't fucking do that well i mean imagine walking up to jordan and be like, hey teach me to dunk from the foul line he's gonna be like he's gonna look at me five, five <laughs> yeah. eleven and a half of me and be like 
You're not no. ever going to do uh, that. No. Not without a trampoline yeah. or maybe crystal meth. We'll see. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, that, that's the uh, everyone who always says, I can, you know, you can do anything you want. I'm like, no, 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 no. You can do anything you can. Yeah. That's 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 the truth. Yeah. You can be president. You can't dunk from the free throw line. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It'll never happen. I think some of the thing about with the, with the NHL playoffs is uh, they're going to be they're going to have two hub cities. Mm hmm. I think if you're in one of those hub cities and you're you're, you're that team in a hub city, that's going to help a lot because you'll be able to go what, home. Every did they day. pick the? Did they pick the? I didn't see the headline. They haven't. They I don't it? think so. They have no. not picked it yet. They haven't picked it yet. No, um, but they might. They, they might pick a city that isn't in the playoff hunt. You know what I mean? That would make mm. that would make sense to me. They would pick two cities that aren't necessarily in the playoffs. You probably got to go east west on this one. Um, one would imagine uh, because of travel imagine. and whatnot. Vegas is probably making a very attractive package at this point. Yeah, I mean, oh, look, yeah. They, just they just have anybody. They have know. the infrastructure to do what a lot of other cities can't do. You know what I mean? Correct. Like honestly, they, do, from from a media right. perspective and from a live sports perspective, they have some. They have stuff. They the, the people that are capable of putting something like that on mm -hmm. live in Vegas. A yeah. lot of them. Yeah. Anyways. At a moment's notice, they're going to say, "You guys can just have the MGM." Yeah. Like, yeah, seriously. You, you can house everybody there. Seriously. That's all good. Like the fucking Warriors practice facility is in downtown Oakland and mm -hmm. on the second on the second floor of a fucking uh, uh, hotel. Is it really? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's above a parking structure at a hotel in, a, in downtown Oakland, like on 10th Street or some shit like that. That's where they practice. That's crazy. My buddy runs the security for that building, and all the players are coming in out all, all the time. And I'm like, isn't that a hotel? He goes, yeah, but the practice facility is upstairs, right? Man. So MGM could just turn one of its floors into a fucking NBA gym if they wanted to. They got plenty of money up there. Yeah, 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 easily. Um, <laughs> the Warriors don't have to worry about practicing at all, though, this year. Uh, no, they're not going to be playing in shit. No, not at all. As a matter of fact, they, if, the, if the season does come back with, like, a week or two of conciliatory, like, last push towards the playoff games, they should just sit the whole thing out. I, I, like, guys, I don't want to lose hope for March Madness. I really don't. I wish they I would do it. I just think it's too good of an idea. <laughs> I agree. It's too, it's too easy. <clears throat> yeah, and it, it'd, it'd be fun. Um, God, man, you'd be glued to your television every single second yeah. of that thing. Too. I mean, if they if they every, did it, how, how long does March Madness actually last? How many days total? It's about three weeks total. Yeah, um, and it's but actually that's sixty four teams. So right it's the now? first weekend in April. It's sixty four teams now. Yes. So you're looking at about even if they included all the NBA teams, you're looking at about half that. So you're looking at about a week and a half, maybe two weeks total if they spread it out a little bit. Correct. So if they did, that's two weeks of capped every single NBA fan on earth, including all of Asia, mm -hmm. where a huge population yeah. of NBA fans exists, are going to be watching every single fucking game. I will say this. China uh, has has said that they still will not show NBA games when they come back. Yeah. I know behind the scenes they're, they're trying to, is it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I we, feel like yeah. the people there are just as subject to the bullshit from their government as we are from our government. So I feel bad for the people not being able to experience the entertainment, yes. But for the oh, government, gotcha. the Chinese government can go fuck itself, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I thought... Easy. No, fuck Easy. Them. We don't want to be pulled off the air right now. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron James. They're listening. LeBron yeah. James is going to show up and apologize on my behalf for that one. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I think the first event that ever gets watched that has a billion viewers is probably going to be a basketball game because it's popular in two major Asian countries, both of which have 1 billion plus population. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, all the Western countries watch basketball as, as well now. Sure. Right? I feel like this would be the time. Like if they were, if China was amenable to allowing that to happen and we put this, uh, this two-week March Madness or whatever, this madness, NBA madness event, whatever you yeah. call it, there, at some point, at least the championship. Imagine that, like you went, you won three games, and it's two teams with one game to play for the fucking NBA championship. Ooh. How many people are going to watch that shit? Man, you couldn't Dude, tear me away like from this. A hundred, at least a hundred million, right? You yeah. would think. I, what, what I only have at least like so. I only have one idea that I think would rival that. Okay, and that's a best of three Super Bowl. Oh like, wow! Just, just imagine, like three. Imagine, like the the Forty Niners play the Chiefs three times and best best no, of best three. of three. You got to win twice. Oof. I mean, just imagine, <laughs> like you have a month. You have Super Bowl month. Yeah. You say, all right, we're gonna play every you know every Sunday. We're gonna play. If you win two straight games, you win. If not, we'll give you a week off. 
We'll have the, you know, the biggest, you know, all-time game three. Like, think about it. The Giants would never beat the Patriots two of three. No. Right? Never. No. Like, you would just be glued. That would be, that, that to me is another idea that will never happen that goes into the brilliant but will never happen. Are you category. so your your supposition yeah. is that it is more frequent that in in the NFL that the best team doesn't win because it's a single game? My supposition is the Giants were not the better team. Period. No matter what anybody right. says against the Patriots, either time. But it's a widely so held. The only way to it's a widely, even that out is to say, well, make it a best of three. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense because the widely held belief is that the, in the NBA specifically, the best team almost always wins. Because yeah. because they're longer series. I think best of seven series. How often is there a true upset? I mean, it's almost impossible. You can't very, win very rare. four of seven games and not be the better team. Yeah, yeah. like I it's, agree. there had to be some injury or something that happened. Yeah. Well, I, back I back to the NHL thing. If they're going to do this tournament style, uh, you can make. I want to see a fucking bracket that we can bet on. That's what I want to see. As soon as they fucking finalize this yeah. thing. We'll get my bookie or somebody to make. I mean, my bookie will do it. They they bet. Yeah, I, I talked they to them on, actually yesterday. Yeah, they bet on everything. Yeah, they, they do everything. They mm. would love nothing more than this, obviously, since there was no <laughs> yeah. March Madness this year. Um, so if you're a better and you like hockey, I would get my bets in on these quote unquote underdog teams like the Knights, the Blues, because they just won. Yeah, they like you can't fucking. Somebody that just won a championship, you can't ever count them out, ever. I tell you this. I will put 100 for you, uh, John. I'll and the pu- Capitals, I'll, yeah. I'll put it on the Capitals. On the Capitals. Yeah. 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 But, but I'm I, good for it. You guys know where I live. But yeah. I would – I mean, look, the Nashville Predators, regardless of what struggles they had during the regular season because they, they underperformed this year, like he said before, you can fucking overperform in the playoffs, especially if it's only four games mm-hmm. you have to win. They're at plus 4,000 right now. You could spend $100 and make $4,000 on that bet. And all you have to do is get lucky four times. That's, That's a lot it. less than having to win four games per series throughout the whole thing. That's it. You can yeah, make a I'm shitload totally. of money betting on this because of how fucked up everything is right now. It is, man. Uh, and then the NBA. So the NBA has announced that they're um, going to try to get back at it mid-July in, in Disney World. The 22nd or some shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what have you heard about this, Frankis? I don't know. You know what? I read it. I, all that I read, I, this is the honest God truth. I started reading it and it didn't include all teams and I lost interest. I was like, why? Why Put all teams in whatever it is. Just put them all in. Let them play. It, like the, the best idea is out there. And everybody, you know, all the, all the people in the, in the, who are working in sports, when you bring this up, they're like, that would be amazing. I'm like, well, why can't, why can't we just create? I don't know. We got to create some kind of movement to make it happen. If not, yeah. then you guys are going to go out. I'm going to go out, and we're going to play our own tournament or something. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, you know, as far as as far as putting everybody in, I'm not necessarily in the camp of that. I say put the fringe teams in, have a play in, and then go from there. Because mm. there's been some mm. real like the Golden State Warriors are horrific. They've given up on the year. Uh, why give them a shot at this? Uh, why not? I, guess I, I think they're done, and you know they want the draft picks. And I think some of these players are worried about their health. Um, you know, I was reading, right. I was reading that Damian uh, Lillard, Lillard sitch, uh, Dame, right. as, as they like to call him, and he was like, "Look, man, I wouldn't fucking play." Like, if, if, well, he said he wouldn't play if they didn't have the opportunity to actually make the playoffs. Right. Like, so they're three games back, I think, right three now. Three and a half, like yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. So they, I mean, like, if you're three and a half games back, you need probably fifteen or twenty games to get back in it. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's not going to happen in a week. No, obviously. not at all. So what's the point? If there's no – I get it. Like, if, you, if it was a normal regular season, what the hell, Brinkus? Yeah, Brinkus what? has got the pickle up. Fucking what? pickle Rick over here. <laughs> He's Trying the, to concentrate, you dick. The messiah. <laughs> of the, you're got, the messiah what? of the Zoom. Dude, I'm, I'm like – I'm the talking pickle. Yeah. Like, that's what they call me on the street. Pickle John. Uh, yeah, if uh, – there, there, you just there's no way to get there in that – small amount of games and if it was a regular season and you had 10 games left and you were 11 games out mm-hmm. your stars probably aren't going to play i get it i agree with him yeah so do i um but they they're having a hard time with it like they still don't have the format figured out yet no and i think they go with our idea uh basically you just throw a pineapple into the middle of the uh arena and see what happens <laughs> see what happens yeah. see who gets the pineapple by the way first. this this zoom call is going to end in 10 minutes because 
uh, we don't have the pro version of Zoom. Apparently, that's a new thing because we've been oh, really? we've been doing this for months now, and all of a sudden, you need a pro version of Zoom to go beyond a thirty-minute yeah. yeah. call. Mm. By the way, the new the new version of Zoom is not compatible with the most recent version of um, Apple of the uh, operating system. So, of course, maybe, of maybe course. That's, that's why, why we're... I look like a that's why I look like a pineapple right now. And oh. by the way, the pineapple <laughs> looks a little bit like my actual haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah apple if, if you're not paying apple they're not gonna do anything for it and what what is no. zoom zoom's getting in on the the money now too where they're like Fuck it's a you. publicly traded company i think yeah, yeah but they're now charging uh yeah i mean look it's that's the model you always release software for free and then start up charging for additional services later that was real quick oh wasn't wow it? that's uh creepy as shit that's a that's a fun one it's very it's very uh, robert smith it's very cure is what you've got going on there now yeah you look like you should uh yes. have longer blacker hair yeah maybe i don't know i had it i had to find a filter to cover up my haircut i was embarrassed yeah, of course <laughs> we all are of everything that's going on my goddamn salad is out of the bowl have dude. you seen the major league baseball thing no, I, so they keep going back and forth with Major League Baseball. Um, I've heard 82 games. I've heard 112 games. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the latest on Major League Baseball? Well, I don't know about the an amount of games. It's definitely a truncated season where they're going to require prorated salaries based on the amount of games played, which is fine. But uh, they also want to do, at least the last thing I heard, was a three-division split, East, Central, West. And here's, here are the Western teams. Uh, Oakland, Seattle, uh, the Angels, Astros, Rangers, Dodgers, Giants, Rockies, D-backs, and Padres. Now, three of those teams are competitive. Yeah. Uh, Central, you have the Indians. They're always, they're pretty good. Royals, terrible. Twins, competitive. White Sox, terrible. Tigers, terrible. Brewers, Reds, Cardinals, maybe competitive. Uh, the Brewers and Reds, probably. Brewers, uh, Brewers and Cardinals, one. probably. Yeah. The Reds, maybe. Cubs, maybe competitive. Pirates, definitely not. Then you have the East. Yankees, competitive. Orioles, not. Rays, yes. Red Sox, yes. Blue Jays, yes. Braves, yes. Nationals, yes. Marlins, no. Mets, maybe. Phillies, definitely. Right? Yeah. So you have way more talent on the mm-hmm. eastern side. They're just going to fucking destroy each other. And if you end up in a situation where they have to do, like it's a three-division situation. So if you end up in a situation where you have to just go hockey or NBA style and pull the top eight teams from the entire thing or the top 16 teams for all three divisions or something like that, the east is going to get fucked. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because there's so much more talent that is going to beat up on each other all year. What do you think about this? Is that guy? finalized? I, no. Okay. I think they're, um, I think uh, Major League Baseball, I read that they're going to make fighting legal. Mm. No Which, way. Charging the mound is just, you're going to be able to, like, you get five mound charges per game. Yeah, you should. I mean, look. Are you serious? No. That would be serious. the greatest goddamn Come thing on. in the face Dude, of the planet. Hey, clerk. They, Listen. Hey, look, <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'll be real with you. Major you League serious? Baseball needs anything right everybody now. Gets they a, need anything, right? Yeah. They need anything. What? Everybody gets you a saw taser. That, you saw the ratings for uh, the Tiger, you know, Brady, Peyton thing, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Where they're just talking smack to each other. Like, honestly, like the PGA, the PGA just needs, you just need like full contact golf. Yeah. I think like you just have to like. Be able to do Noonan. You got to be able to 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 just say whatever you want. Like it would be amazing. I think, I think they just all mic sports up. Need it. Mic up the players. Mic let up them the talk players. trash to yeah. each other. Uh, put, put the totally. games. Put the games on a seven second delay. Get your production crew to bleep out the profanity, but let them talk trash. Because we, we watched it. We watched uh, in the spring training. Freddie. Yeah, Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman. From the Braves. A, a number of other guys. Uh, and it can it could be like. ESPN Deportes can have the conversation between uh, Acuna and uh, and Albies mm-hmm. the whole time because they're talking shit to each other constantly the whole time too. And th- th- I'm a Braves but, I'm a Braves fan, so I concentrate on them. But like, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that microphone being turned on that you can't do otherwise. It's a lot more entertaining than just listen to some sleepy old dude talk about which way the ball broke when he threw a pitch. Right. Right. Like the N- MLB broadcasts the way, are a problem, I think. By the way, the uh, it, just to tell you how far we've come as a world and a society, I don't know, don't know if you guys remember this, but on like March 1st, like shortly before the lockdown, the biggest story was the Astros stole signs. Yeah. Like, do you think anybody's remembering that when we come back? Like, we need to get back at them. 
they stole sign or like yeah. have we all completely <clears throat> forgotten about this? Well, I don't know. Araldus Chapman seems to remember because he directly threatened all the players on the Astros about three right. weeks He'll ago. He'll remember, <laughs> and he throws 104 yeah, miles dude. per hour. He'll definitely so, remember. Yeah, uh, but otherwise, yeah, I don't know. I don't think anybody remembers any. I don't know if people remember COVID right now because they're spitting in each other's faces. I yeah. Know. Houston, right. yeah. Houston what, yeah, what, can send a. What happened to social distancing and like <laughs> this COVID know. thing? Boy, like, huh? Houston can <laughs> send a big thank you to China for COVID, and then uh, COVID can can send a, a big thank you. To, I think to America the Houston Astros the are probably responsible for not only COVID but uh, institutional racism in America. Probably they did both of those <laughs> things to make sure they didn't get let up this season, <laughs> right? Yeah. Probably. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I, that, that's what I was curious. So I was on my first flight um, of the of the year after COVID, right? Uh, I just yeah. came back from Austin, Texas. I was telling Dan, you fly in, you got mask on. Uh, riots happen day two. There's millions of people in the streets. No one gives a shit about COVID. No one's wearing a mask no. anymore. And it is completely no. over. Um, therefore, yeah. are these conversations with sports? How is that going to affect this? Because right now... There's millions of people marching in the streets as we're on air right now. So why not just bring everything back immediately and call it a fucking day? Yeah, give give give, give people a place to go. Like be like, look, if you're going to march past the stadium, we have a game going on. Like you might as well, I don't know. Like the the it's interesting because normally normally you say uh when there's civil unrest of some kind or people are restless you're like, well, eventually, you know, they're going to have to make money for their family and going to have to go home and whatever. You're like, oh, yeah, there are 40 million people unemployed right now. Yeah. Like they they don't have anywhere to go. So I, I think the best thing that could happen. I mean, this is like think about this. We will get through this. We will get by past this sport by itself is going to be the great healer. I mean, every game, every sport, everything that we can attend will be something that we can rally around and find a common cause. It will be more important than ever. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's worth the COVID risk. I agree.